If you are at all interested in Internet of Things or IoT, this is the best website you can come to. It's developer.embed.org. An embed really refers to ARM Cortex M version processors that have been specifically designed to deal with IoT or Internet of Things. Now you can select from right now as of March 2017, you can select from uh, up to 117 different platforms that are here. And you can narrow the field down a little bit by selecting various features that you want. For instance, Embed OS 5 allows you security from the chip to the cloud and back. And there's certain processors in this list of 117 that will support that. We have a number of target vendors. We have a number of platform vendors here. And we also have different types of connectivity that you can select from to further narrow your choices. And we have form factors such as Arduino compatibility, breadboard ability, Zigbee. We have interface firmware and software support. Now what I'm going to select here is I'm going to select Simpsons DAP. And what that means is you do not need an expensive JTAG connector, which could be $50 to $100 to do troubleshooting by setting breakpoints, because this can be done directly without using that. And I'm also going to select Arduino compatibility because we want to be able to have things that will fit onto an Arduino shield form factor. And we'll also select Embed OS 5. So with all those selected, we're down to 19 of the 117. Now of all these boards that are here, I've selected the Freedom K64 board. And the reason for that is because it has a lot of extras beyond the ones that I selected. It has the ability to connect Arduino Shields, and we'll take a look at a specific one from Grove in a second. But it also has an Ethernet connector, which means you can actually send data right out to the web and analyze it, as we'll see here as an example later. But it also has a 3D accelerometer, a magnetometer. It has a micro SD card connector, which allows you to sample and save up to gigabytes of data if required. Now this shield that you see here works on embed, but it also works specifically on the Arduino Uno form factor as well. And there's a separate one that actually works on Raspberry Pi. And why is this important? Because from this shield, through these cables, you can connect up a number of devices such as solid state relays, motion detectors, um, all sorts of various things such as RFID, anything you want. There's a whole variety of products that come from Grove Industries. When you want to start programming this stuff, there's lots of resources. Uh, all of these libraries for TCIP networking, Internet of Things, and WebSockets, USB, custom peripheral drivers, all of these things that are here work on all of those boards that we saw at the start. So it works in a consistent manner. Now if we take a look here, here's a program that I've written here that will deal with the Ethernet. And you'll see here that when I open this up and take a look, these are library functions that have already been pre-written. And unlike Arduino, these are written in C++. They're open source and they're royalty free, which means you can build real apps. And unlike Arduino, which has a couple of 32-bit machines, all of these ARM Embed Cortex M version processors are all 32 bits. Now, in this program that you see here, we talked a little bit about security. Before we send anything to this website, as we'll see, which is uh, SparkFun. SparkFun is a company, sparkfun.com sells a lot of electronic components, but what they do is they provide a data logging service that you can use. And when you want to send something securely to that website, you have to send a public key and a private key with every data element that you're going to send there. But once you do that, you're going to be able to get up to 50 megabytes of data sampling for free, a service that they provide. And then you can click on here to export to analog I.O. and actually do a analysis where you can see I'd send it a sine wave here and some other stuff at the other end. But you can send multiple waves. Uh, so there's a sine wave uh, and a square wave with some other stuff on here. You can then do an analysis, like here's the sum of the waves, here's a difference, here's an average. And because it's time and date stamped, you can actually go up and down here and see how these trends and so on change over time. So this has been a short introduction, but if you think about it, what is Apple doing with their Apple Watch right now? They're sending heart rate monitor information 
to a web page so that they can have your doctor look at it remotely and determine whether or not you've got issues. So there's so many things you can do with IoT and this is just a quick idea of how you can get started with some of the things in IoT and have some fun with it and hopefully at some point make some money as well.